cool. How's it going everyone? It's Devin here with Make Anything. And as I record this, my channel is approaching 180,000 subscribers, which is just so cool. I didn't imagine it growing so fast and I love every minute of it. That said, at this size, I still rely on several sources of revenue to continue producing these videos at the rate at which I do. So I get some money from the ads you watch here on YouTube, and I also have the occasional sponsored video. Then there's affiliate links. If I have a printer that I want to recommend to you guys, I can earn a small percentage of that sale. Those are all really cool, but the one that I appreciate the most is Patreon. Patreon is where regular viewers like you decide that your money is worth giving to me so that I can continue making these videos, and that means so much to me. I try to thank my patrons however I can, so on Patreon I'll give occasional updates and behind the scenes looks at what I'm doing, and I'll also have a few prizes and giveaways. Early patrons got Make Anything pins, kind of like this one I'm wearing, to show that they're part of the Make Anything team. And that was really fun, but I thought I would come up with a more involved reward. So when I created this pegboard, I came up with something that I think is really cool. I designed these pixels, which are basically just little squares that stick in the pegboard, and they can be used to create designs and pixel drawings, but they can also be used as little canvases for 3D pen art. And I decided to do that. I asked my patrons to send in requests for things that I should draw on these pixels, and then your requests are gonna get stuck up on this pegboard to be shown in future videos. A little way of making you more a part of the Make Anything team and my way of saying thanks. Plus, it'll be cool to have all these different drawings on the pegboard, I think. By now, I already got a handful of requests. Enough to do this video. So that's what we're doing today. Some 3D pen doodles for these little Patreon pixel pegboard pieces. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna be using this 3Doodler Pro because it's got a replaceable nozzle, so I could put a smaller nozzle on there to hopefully get enough detail to draw on these tiny squares, and it also lets me slow down the pen a lot, which should also help. It's gonna be tricky. Let's see what I can do. So here we've got the 3Doodler Pro, and as I said, I'm gonna swap out the nozzle with this little nozzle kit. They've got a smaller nozzle, so I'm gonna add that on to try to get as much detail as possible out of this pen. For the first request, I'm gonna use this flexible filament, but mostly just because I like the transparent green color. This request comes from Crumb, and she asked me to make a Minecraft creeper face. So I'm gonna start by coloring the entire pixel with this cool green color, and on top of that, I'm gonna use this black flexible filament, and then draw in this kind of pixelated face that the creeper has in Minecraft. I used to be pretty into Minecraft myself, and this is a nice, simple drawing, so thanks, Crumb, for making it easy on me. There we have it, a cute little creeper face. And luckily, this is not the explosive kind. Up next, we've got a cool request by Luke Tyhurst. And since he's on the gold tier of my Patreon, he gets a 4x1 inch pixel. That's perfect for his request, which was to show a rocket launching from Earth to Mars. Luke said that innovation, like space exploration, is what keeps him going and what motivates him, so he's putting that on the pegboard as his way of inspiring others. So I'm going to start by filling in the void of space with this metallic blue filament. And I discovered that the filament from the pen is actually so hot that it was starting to melt the pixel itself, so I decided to stick it on the pegboard and work on there, that way I know it's going to fit when it's done. Switching to white filament, I'm going to throw some stars in there and draw the base of my rocket ship. And then I'll use some red for accents on the fins and the other parts of the rocket. I swapped to yellow for the flame, but I intentionally left some of the red in there. That way we get this cool blend of red, orange, and yellow. Then I decided to use a translucent orange for Mars with some translucent red on top of that. For Earth, I'm going to use a lighter blue, and I'll fill it in that same way by making these concentric circles. And then on top of that, we'll have our land mass. And I'll also scribble some white on there to kind of mimic the clouds and atmosphere of Earth. A couple more stars sprinkled in, and we've got ourselves a cool little space pictogram. I really like this one. Our next request comes from Megan, and she asked me to draw a narwhal with a top hat. 
That's a lot to fit on this little one inch square tile, so I'm just gonna draw the head of the narwhal here. And if this whale has a top hat, I'm guessing it's pretty fancy, so I'll give it a golden horn, and then we'll throw that hat on top. A little dot for the eye, and there we go. It might be mistaken for a snowman or a seagull, but no, that is in fact a narwhal, because I say so. By this point, I was having under extrusion problems with both my 3 Doodler Pro and the Create, so I ended up switching to the Scribbler version 3 for the rest of these tiles. This next pixel is for Skull, and Skull asked for a Litecoin logo. Litecoin is a cryptocurrency similar to Bitcoin. How it actually works is a bit over my head, but basically it means that this currency isn't managed by a central authority. It's more of a peer-to-peer, -peer, open source deal. I don't even know how to explain it, but hey, that's what Skull asked for, so there's your Litecoin logo. Hannes asked me to do a map of Austria with a marker on what I'm guessing is his hometown of Linz. Now this is another tough one to depict on this little tiny pixel, but I was using a reference and I did my best to create a somewhat accurate map of Austria. Maybe those of you who are Austrian can tell me if I did a decent job with this. To me it kind of just looks like a deep fried chicken leg, but I did my best and I'm using those Austrian colors, so hopefully it's somewhat recognizable. My next request comes from Danielle Ilvis, and she asked me to draw a carpet python head. I wasn't familiar with this snake, but I looked it up and it's got this really cool black and yellow pattern on its skin, so that was a fun little drawing. Nick Clements asked me to draw the logo for the 2001 film Evolution. I actually don't recall too much from this film, but I do remember that I was quite a fan and I watched it a few times. Even if you're not familiar with the movie, the logo is still pretty cool, this little three-eyed smiley face. The next request came from Alex Maravec, and he wanted me to do a green dragon breathing fire. So I'll give him that green S-shaped body and fill in the wings. He looks properly ready to burninate the countryside. So we'll give him some yellow flames and throw some red in there as well. For these little red flecks, I'm actually not even pressing the extrude button. I'm kind of just letting the filament leak out. All right, here's our dragon with its goofy little feet. It was another tough one to fit onto that little one inch pixel. Teresa requested that I draw a manatee, which I thought was my second whale for the day, but I learned that manatees actually aren't whales. They're just another type of aquatic mammal. Manatees are actually distinct enough that I was able to fit the entire animal onto this pixel. And I actually really like how this one came out. It's simple, but cute. Next up, we've got a request by Tefala, who asked for a computer mouse with all the features of a living mouse. So I'll give it a big pink nose, a tail, some eyes, and some big ears. Then I'll draw in the mouse buttons so that it still looks somewhat like a computer mouse. Finally, I saved my two largest pixels for last and these were requested by M. Gibson, who is a member of my board of trustees, meaning she's really helped support my channel. Emily asked me to draw Pisces, horses, and koi, and since koi are often used to represent the Pisces symbol, I decided to combine those into this first tile. I'll figure out the composition by first just outlining the bodies of the two fish, swirling about one another, and then I'll go ahead and fill that in with this white filament. Then I can add in their tails, and also their side fins. Next I'll add in some color with this bright orange filament, and I'm using this scribbly way of laying down the plastic to somewhat mimic the scales on the koi fish. On top of that orange, I'll add this more red orange to give the color a little more depth. Then I'll also scribble in some black, since koi fish often have black scales as well. I'll switch back to the white to fill in the body a bit more, add those fins on the top of the fish, and also add other little details like the whiskers. Finally, I'll add a couple pink accents for the lips, as well as details on the fins and tail. There's our koi Pisces symbol, and it looks super cool. You can see how the larger pixel definitely lets me add more detail. 
Now for the horses, which I was honestly pretty worried about since I'm notoriously bad at drawing horses, but I think these ones came out decently. The first one looked really good, and then I drew the second one which I wanted to be behind the first, but it was larger so I ended up drawing it on top and kind of adjusting things as I went along. I used black to add details like the eyes, hooves, tails, and spots. And then I decided to give it a bit of context, so I drew these hills for the horses to frolic on, and then I also added a big bright golden sun behind them. There we go, some happy frolicking horses. Alright, those are all the Patreon pixel requests I've gotten so far, so I'll throw those all up on this big blank pegboard. Coincidentally, together they all make a perfect little rectangle. Alright guys, there are my pixels, the very first addition to this pegboard. And it's just a small patch right now, but it already looks pretty cool. So I'm excited to hopefully fill this thing up if I get more requests from the rest of my patrons. And of course, if you're not already on the Make Anything team, I'd love to have you join. It really means so much when you donate money, even if it's $2 a month, to let me know that you like what I'm doing and that I'm doing it for a reason, you know? I'm doing it for you guys. Yeah, let me know if you guys like this idea. I think it's super cool. It was really fun. It's a little more work than I expected because there's a lot of switching out of colors, but it is fun. So I welcome a flood of requests. Send them in. Oh, and it's a shame that both of my Three Doodler pens kind of pooped out. Uh, I really like Three Doodler as a company. I've been using their pens since the beginning and they were always really good, but they seem to be struggling now. The Scribbler version 3 is the trooper. That's the one that tends to save the day when my 3D pen reviews of other cheaper pens fail. And this thing has been going strong. I did replace the nozzle, but I guess that's my current go-to 3D pen recommendation by now, the Scribbler. All right, that's it for today. Another big thank you to my patrons. I look forward to making you more great videos. And until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired.